Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So we will be continuing our discussion about um, amino acids and protein. So again, good afternoon to each and every one of you. I hope that this morning you were able to really learn um, the basic and you were able to review the basic about amino acid and protein. So for this afternoon, uh, we will be continuing our discussion about amino acids and your proteins. Just so let us just pick it up from where we start, uh, where we stop kanina. So moving forward, let's go to the different classifications of your proteins. So your proteins can actually be classified according to their function and according to their structure. This time, we're not talking about their chemical structure. We're not talking about the primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary structure of your proteins. Instead, we're talking about the structure of your proteins with regards to um, being simple or conjugated proteins. On the other hand, um, a big chunk of this discussion would actually revolve around the different plasma proteins depending on their function. So your proteins are very essential in your body because they actually perform a lot of different things. They can be um, an enzyme, they can be a hormone, they can be a transport protein, they can also be an immunoglobulin or an antibody. They can also be structural proteins. They can be storage proteins for your energy. They can also be um, energy sources. And they also play an important role in the maintenance of your osmotic pressure or your osmotic force. So let's start with the first one, which are your enzymes. So your enzymes are proteins that catalyzes your chemical reaction. So much of the enzymology part will actually be discussed further when you reach your clinical chemistry too. But to give you a glimpse, there are different classes of enzymes. So these different classes of enzymes perform different action. So take for example, you have your lyases. Your lyases helps in the breakdown, okay? In the breakdown of your um, compound without water. So those are lyases compared to hydrolases. Hydrolases are also enzymes that promotes breakdown of compounds with with water in as um, as the product so we have different enzymes so when we say catalyze they hasten pinapabilis nila yung particular reaction and nice thing to write down makikisulat na lang po ako mga kapanalig sa paniniwala that your enzymes lower your enzymes catalyzes your chemical reaction by lowering down the activation energy Again, your enzymes lowers down the activation energy needed for a chemical reaction to take place. That's why mas napapabilis nila yung isang chemical reaction. So that is for your enzyme. So makikisulat ako dyan para on your CC2, kayang-kaya mo magpabibo. Pag tinanong, how does your enzyme catalyzes a particular chemical reaction? Secondly, we also have your hormones. Your hormones are chemical messengers that controls the action of a specific cell, okay? And uh, in your endocrinology, we will be talking about your hormones. So your hormones, I believe um, during your anatomy and physiology, this were all discussed, that these hormones perform a specific action as well. They trigger a particular cell to perform a particular action. And balikan na lang natin, wag na tayong lumayo, let's go back to your carbohydrates. Your insulin, your car your glucagon, your epinephrine, your cortisol, your growth hormones, your tyroxine, those are different hormones. Hormones that um perform a particular reaction. So take for example for your insulin, they um administer the entry of your glucose from the plasma into the cell. So that's an action that only insulin can do. So that is one which represents your metabolism. We also have hormones that are responsible for growth and development. To name a few, we have growth hormone. Ayan, your growth hormone is one that um, increases bone growth and muscle growth in us. We also have those that I, I mentioned a while back, metabolism, your insulin, your glucagon, among others. We also have um, sexual function and reproduction. We have testosterone. We, ha we have... Yeah, we have your testosterone, we have your, um, what do you call this? We ha also have your epinephrines as hormones in general. And we also have here your um, hormones that affects your behavior. So when I say affects your behavior, the, your moods, okay, uh, they also are proteins 
by nature. So those are your hormones. Moving forward, we, your um, proteins can also be classified being transport proteins. So there are a lot of transport proteins. What, uh, what do they transport? So remember this morning we were talking about um, the solubility of your protein. The solubility of your protein enabled them to really just swim around. Sabi nyo nga sa comment ninyo. They, you, and they, enable, they are being enabled to just swim around and room around your plasma because of their solubility. And because of that solubility, though our proteins are perfect example of be, uh, proteins being transporters of many ions, um, small molecules, or even macromolecules in the case of your lipids. So they can actually carry your hormones, your vitamins, your lipids, and your minerals and one thing that all of this have in common is that um, hormones vitamins lipids minerals that are water insoluble okay water insoluble so anything that cannot um, pass through or cannot be transported or cannot freely move around your plasma they need a transport molecule okay and that transport molecule is your your transport protein so your hormones that are fat based or lipid based your vitamins that are fat by we call them fat vitamins your adec your vitamin a d e and k okay your vitamin a d um e and k all of those four are your fat soluble vitamins and they cannot freely move around in your plasma that's why they need your transport protein of, your, of course obviously you already know that lipids are insoluble in water insoluble in your plasma that's why they need your lipoproteins and what do you call the protein part again what do you call the protein part of a lipoprotein comment down on your um or rather comment beside your your chat box so what do we call the protein portion of your lipoproteins okay five seconds Okay, correct. That is your apolipoprotein. Okay, those are your apolipoprotein. So moving forward after your transport protein, we also have here your immunoglobulins. Your immunoglobulins are also called your um, antibodies. So among all of your um, um, proteins, it is the only protein not synthesized by your hepatocytes or by your liver because they are synthesized by what? Your, correct, plasma cells. And the, those are type of B cells in your uh, blood. So we have five classes of immunoglobulins. We have immunoglobulin D, M, G, A, and D. So I always want to um, arrange it in a manner um, from the most abundant to the least abundant. And that is G, A, M, E, D. Game. Okay. So that is my palatandaan, if I may say so. So game, okay, G-A-M-E-D, that is the um, order of immunoglobulin from the most abundant to the least abundant. So what does our antibodies do or what does our antibodies do and your immunoglobulins do in our body? They actually neutralizes your foreign antigens and they can also act as opsonins that hasten your phagocytosis. Again, opsonins that hasten or that um, amplify, that enhances phagocytosis. So much of that in your immunology next semester. Aside from that, we also have structural proteins. Structural proteins like your collagen, elastin, keratin, and even cell and uh, your cellular and extracellular uh, matrices. So in your muscles, we have your tendons, we and also in your bone matrix. So those are structural proteins that aid in the durability, in the not durability, but the stability of our um, structures, our bones inside our cell, and even our organs. So. Moving forward to our storage protein and energy protein. Storage proteins, obviously, because they are they serve as a reserve meta. Uh, they, uh, they serve as a reserve of metal ions and amino acids. So your storage, um, your storage pool of amino acid are found in your liver, and at the same time, your fer um, your ferritin. Okay, your ferritin is an example of a storage protein, which is a storage of what? A storage of your Correct. A storage form of your iron. Okay. Iron. So 
in addition to that, um, your protein can also act as energy proteins. That's correct. Your energy protein is very important. Number one in the synthesis of your creatine. Okay, and this is um, synthesis of your creatine. Creatine um, is an example of an energy protein. So energy proteins in general are reserved source of energy for tissues and muscle. So creatine is actually very much found in your muscles because um, your muscles really do need a lot of energy and ATP for it to work. By simply just doing this, a lot of ATP are being used up, okay, used up by my muscles. So the, that one is for your energy proteins. And of course, we also have proteins being regulator of your osmotic force. So osmotic force, why do we say osmotic force? Because the distribution of water throughout your compartments of body of your body is actually being uh, affected by your protein. So kapag masyadong konti yung tubig, okay? Kapag masyadong konti yung tubig sa iyong katawan, uh, meaning to say you have low um you have low um protein in in your body that would affect now your um the osmolality the osmotic force in your body now eventually leading to the formation of edema in your um limbs or in other parts of your body okay so those are your proteins classified according to their function so they are they have a lot of different functions and later on we will actually be discussing each of those plasma proteins that we will be talking about today so moving forward let's now go to the different um types of uh, the different types of conjugated proteins, okay? So, sir, what do we mean by conjugated proteins? Originally, um, there are actually um, simple proteins and we have your conjugated proteins. When we say simple proteins, these are like your, um, these are like your globins, okay? Wala silang kasama. They are just plain protein, okay? Plain, when I say plain protein, wala siyang dagdag na metals, Car carbo carbohydrates or lipids or any sort of thing. It's just a plain parang virgin na protein. Wala siyang ka flow, flow sa katawan. Okay? But on the other hand, we also have your conjugated protein. So by its by definition, conjug um, conjugation meaning to say there is already a combination of two compounds. So a protein and an X. What is that X? We'll be discussing at that in a short while. So let's proceed to our next discussion, which are your different proteins according to um, different types of um, conjugated proteins. And we have here the first one, which are your metalloproteins. Metalloproteins are proteins with metal ions attached to it. So we have your ferritin that has your iron uh, alongside with it. We have your um, your your ferritin is a ferric, okay? I want you to remember that. Your your ferritin contains your ferric iron. Your ceruloplasmin contains what? Contains your... Your ceruloplasmin contains your... Um, contains your... Uh, what do you call this? Your copper. Your hemoglobin, okay? Your hemoglobin contains your what? Your hemoglobin contains your... Your hemoglobin do contain your um iron as well but this time a different type of iron because okay why a different types of iron because we are talking about your ferrous iron okay we're talking about your ferrous iron on the other hand okay on the other hand we also have your flava proteins okay your flavo proteins okay your flavo proteins are what proteins that have flavin in it okay they have a flavin or riboflavin in it okay so this is a type of a vitamin okay so that is very important for you to remember okay so those flavin is also very important okay so example of that are your riboflavin riboflavin okay so madali lang tandaan di ba ferritin ferric iron ceruloplasmin copper Hemoglobin ferrous iron, your flava flavo protein, we have your flavines. On the other hand, we also have your glycoproteins. Your glycoproteins are proteins that has a carbohydrate subunit attached to its protein. So an example of that is your hapto.
immunoglobulin and your alpha-1 antitrypsin. I will not be talking about their function because in a short while, we will actually be talking about the major plasma proteins inside your body. So moving forward now, okay, moving forward now, we also have here your mucoproteins. Okay, I just want to go back to mucoproteins. So what are mucoproteins? To start with, mucoproteins are proteins that has carbohydrate attached to it. But the thing here is that carbohydrate has greater concentration compared to your proteins. That's why we call them mucoproteins. So in short, para itong um, carbohydrates na may dagdag na um, protein. Si glycoprotein, para siyang protein na may naka-attach na carbohydrate. I hope it makes sense. So moving forward, you also have your lipoproteins. So your lipoproteins are... Okay, your lipoproteins, okay, so please disregard the, the, the definition that, are, that is written on the side. So your, so your lipoproteins, obviously, are carriers of lipids and fats. So we have five major types of li lipoproteins. We have your chylomicrons, your VLDL, LDL, HDL, and yeah, we have, and your IDL as well. So those are the major, uh, the major and the minor types of lipoproteins. On the other hand, we also have your mucoproteins, okay? So your mucoproteins, again, these are fibrous pro, uh, mucoproteins. So these are also um, fibrous protein that are essential, okay? That are essential in the structure of your cells and your tissue. I guess this is the definition for your structural protein, okay? But yeah, for your lipoproteins, you have those four major chylomicrons, your VLDL, uh, your LDL, and your HDL. Now we go and we just move forward with your nucleoproteins. What are nucleoproteins? So nucleoproteins are proteins combined with your nucleic acids, such as your DNA and your RNA. So an example of this are your histones. Histones, H-I-S-T-O-N-E-S. These are your histones onto which the double-stranded, the alpha helix, um, the the double-stranded DNA is actually wrapped around those, those what do you call this? Those um, wrapped around those histones. So take for example, I have this. This is my histones. Okay, and take for example, this is my um, DNA. My histones is this one, and my DNA is actually wrapped around. Okay, is actually wrapped around the histones. That is how um, eventually it will form now your chromosome. Kaya siya may shape na X, Y, or what so shape of your chromosome. So those are your nucleoproteins. They are actually combined with your nucleic acid. So maybe some of you will be wondering, sir, bakit pa kailangan ng, ng histones in the DNA? It actually protects or actually um, stabilizes the structure of your DNA. So moving forward, okay, moving forward, let's now go to the different plasma proteins. So we did discuss about amino acids okay we did discuss about amino acids we did discuss about proteins we did discuss about plasma okay we did discuss about plasma proteins so before we um before we proceed okay before we proceed to plasma protein if um if in case you have any questions so we're, since we're doing this asynchronously if you have any questions you can actually go back later on to our google meet 30 minutes before uh yeah, around 15 minutes before the end of our discussion, and then you can post your questions there. I will also be posting a, um, I will also be posting a discussion group, okay, or discussion board rather on your TLC to entertain questions that might arise when you are studying amino acids and protein. So now let's go to your plasma protein. Um, so plasma proteins are generally only divided into two, okay? Madaming proteins. Uh, sabi nga ni sir, madaming proteins. Sir, yung daming functions, di ba? But generally, they're only classified into two, okay? So later, I will say the arguable, arguable number three. So we have two, okay? We have two major types of plasma proteins. Those are your albumin and your globin. Your albumin and your globin, okay? Your albumin and your globin. So most frequently analyzed of all proteins are your albumin and your globulin. Why are they 
the most frequently analyzed of all type of protein because they are the major classification or major division of your plasma protein, your albumin, and your globulin. That's why we have a test called your total, your TPAG. Um, in your TPAG, we measure your total, your total protein, your albumin, your globulin, and your albumin-globulin ratio. Much of that when we go to our liver function next meeting. But let me just discuss to you all the major plasma proteins for this the meeting para ready ready na tayo when we go to the, our, our liver function next week. Okay. So having said that, okay, I'll be I'll be elaborating more about the, the total protein, albumin, globulin, A and G ratio next meeting. So like what I was mentioning a while back, we have two major... Um, plasma proteins, your albumin and your globulin. In some cases, you might be um, coming across um, other um, other references that would include your pre-albumin. Okay, we have your pre-albumin. We have your pre-albumin, your albumin, and your globulin. But routinely, okay, routinely, if we're gonna base it in the routine test, the two major um, lipoproteins are rather proteins are your albumin and your your albumin and your um, globulin okay so your albumin and your globulin your albumin is an individual protein on its own but did you know that when we try to fractionize okay when we try to fractionize your your protein your globin can actually be subdivided pa into not just one not the two but four, okay? We can actually divide them into four major types of globin uh, or of globulins, okay? Of globulin. So pardon me if I actually mention it globin, but it should be albumin and globulin, okay? Albumin and globulin. Again, if I was able to mention it um, globin tanina, it should be globulin, okay? Albumin and globulin. Those are the two major types of your proteins. So, your albumin is albumin in itself. Wala na siyang pakialam, okay? And your globulins, okay, your globulins can be subdivided into four. Your alpha-1, alpha-2, your beta, and your gamma globulins. And perhaps you already know why do we call it such because we were able to separate them using your electrophoresis, okay? So using electrophoresis, we can now, you can now see, okay, you can now see that the most abundant, um, plasma protein so if we're gonna compare albumin and globulin the most abundant is actually your albumin okay your albumin and then followed by your alpha 1 alpha 2 your beta your gamma so sir why do we have such um different globulin so your globulins were actually separated according to their electrophoretic mobility depend sa pinaka mabilis okay so obviously here the fastest okay the fastest um, plasma protein or the most anodic, okay? But anodic sir, pinaka ma, ma um, attracted dun sa anode. Anode, which is your um, positively charged, your positively charged electrode. So, this albumin is the fastest one that migrated from the point of application to the anode. Pangalawang pinaka mabilis is your alpha 1. Pangalawa, si alpha 2, then si beta, then si gamma. So, as you can see, um when we transverse our diseases in your proteins you will actually be seeing the this electrophoretic pattern again this is one of my favorite part of your hemoglobin uh, uh, rather very favorite ko na part ng protein okay so let's us now talk about the different proteins so technically i will actually be talking about um your al your prealbumin your your albumin and then the different types of your globulin. So a total of how many globulins are we talking about today? A total of... Seventeen. A total of seventeen globulins. So, di ba, sabi ko nga sa inyo, you don't need to memorize the amino acids, but you have to memorize and familiarize yourself with all of this plasma protein. So let's get started. So the first one is your prealbumin. Your prealbumin is also known as your transthyretin. 
Okay? Later, i-decode natin bakit siya tinatawag na transthyroidine. So, your pre-albumin, ladies and gentlemen, are transport protein for your thyroid hormone and your retinol. Kaya siya tinawag na transthyroidine. Sir, hindi ko pa rin nag-gets. Oh, let me do this for you. Transthyroidine um, or your pre-albumin transports your thyroid hormone and your retinol or your vitamin A. Okay? Your vitamin A or your retinol. So, make sense now? So, your album, your pre-albumin or also known as your transthyretin, transport your thyroid hormone and your retinol or your vitamin A. At the same time, these are acute phase reactant proteins. Okay? So, they have a two days short half-life. Okay? They only have a short half-life. And take note, everyone, this is the best marker for poor nutritional status. Okay? Poor nutritional status. So you can actually see a decrease of this type of um, protein and hepatic damage in tissue necrosis in your acute... Um, they are de also decreased in your uh, inf inflammation. So meaning to say they are negative acute phase reactant. Sir, um, patalastas lang, what are acute phase reactant? Acute phase reactants are proteins that um, that respond when there is a particular inflammation in your body. So there are two types of APR or acute phase reactants or acute phase proteins. We have your positive APRs. I guess the O3 already know this. The AP, the positive APR and the negative APR. So a, a, a positive acute phase, a, a positive acute phase reactant increases kapag may inflammation. A negative acute phase reactant decreases if there is a, a case of inflammation. Your pre-albumin is a type of a negative acute phase reactant. Sir, madami din po ba ito? Ito yung technique ko sa inyo. Okay? Just write down the negative acute phase reactant. Because there are only a few um, proteins that are negative acute phase reactant. Meaning to say, bumababa kapag may inflammation. The rest, almost, they all increase. Lahat tumataas, kakaunti lang yung bumababa. So ngayon, sinusulat mo na dapat sa iyong papel or sa kahit ano man, baka meron... May mga, ano dyan, paperless, di ba, Mother, Mother Earth friendly, they are using their iPad. So you should have, uh, write, you should write down there on the side, the what? Uh, Pre-albumin, <clears throat> pre-albumin is an acute phase, a negative acute phase reactant. So moving forward, um, we can also expect increase of pre-albumin in steroid treatment, alcoholism, and chronic kidney failure. Okay, chronic kidney failure. So, moving forward, let's go now to your albumin. So, madami-dami itong yung pag-uusapan natin, but what I want you to remember is, most importantly, the function of the protein. Okay? The function of the protein, para saan si protein, ano yung unique sa protein na ito, at saan siya tumataas at bumababa. In short, lahat ng nandito sa PowerPoint, you need to um, really study this. And of course, alongside, of course, with your um, Bishop and your Hendrix. So your albumin contains 585 amino acids. So they have a total of 20 days as na half life. So 20 days na half life. So in your seru, ayan, um, they have the highest concentration in your plasma. Okay, they have a highest concentration in your plasma. So this thing here, um, your CF, that is your conversion factor for your albumin is 10 actually. So they have the highest concentration in your plasma. So albumin is the most abundant, the highest concentration of all your major um, plasma protein. So they are, um, they, they usually have systemic efflux, especially in transcapillary escape. They have a transcapillary escape rate um, of 80%. Okay, 80% um, in your intravascular fluid. They can also act as a pH buffer. And another thing about your albumin, pangalawa na to, it is a type of a negative acute phase reactant, which is um, opposed to that it's normal. So kapag, um, kapag normal, kapag normal na situation, mataas si albumin. But in cases of um, inflammation or disease state, they tend to go down and down and down. So your albumin, um, I would call your albumin as the general transport protein. Okay. It is the general transport protein because a lot of the things that cannot be transported freely or cannot transport freely in your plasma, si albumin yan. 
Mamaya pag-uusapan natin, di ba? Pinag-uusapan natin si transferin, meron kang haptoglobin, hemopexin. Lahat yon specific. May kanya-kanya silang molecule na sinusundo sa plasma. But for albumin, wala siyang pinipili. Ito yung parang um, libreng pasakay ng gobyerno natin, di ba? Libreng pasakay ng gobyerno. So yun lang kaya ng gobyerno natin, libreng pasakay. So, um kidding aside uh, moving forward to the transport protein so when with regards to transport protein they um your albumin is a general transport protein so they can transport any molecules any drugs that cannot be transported freely in your plasma aside from that they also are affected by half life of drugs okay they are ap- affected by the half life of drugs and nice thing to know your glycosylated albumin what is glycosyl- glycosylated hemoglobin everyone So chat box, chat box, or glycosylated hemoglobin is a short-term test, okay? It is a test for a short-term hyperglycemic control, usually two to three weeks or approximately one month, okay? One month. And of course, we do measure it using your um, affinity chromatographic method uh, with your boronic acid. So your glycosylated Albumin is also known as your what? Chat box, everyone. Your glycosylated hemoglobin is also known as 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Your glycosylated hemoglobin, uh, your glycosylated albumin rather is also known as your fructosamine. Correct, your fructosamine. So what other instances that your albumin is decreased? Madaming pagkakataon na bumababa si albumin. Okay. Example is skin loss due to burns or exfoliative dermatitis, okay? Malnutrition and malabsorption, gaya nga ng sagot kanina nila, gaya nga ng sagot kanina do, during our discussion nila JM, nila Velasco, okay? Nila Montero at Velasco because your protein, okay, your amino acid are being used up as energy or in, on the other hand, you don't have enough amino acid to actually make up now your your albumin or your protein in general. We can also have your protein losing enteropathy of your G- gastrointestinal loss. So instead of actually absorbing, you are flashing them out. So we also have liver disease. Sir, bakit liver disease? Of course, obviously your al- your protein are secreted or are produced mainly by your hepatocytes in your liver. That's why any disease in your liver will also affect the synthesis of your albumin. Much of those in your liver function next week. So we also have kidney loss in your nephrotic syndrome. So I, I think you all know this, that your glomerulus, okay, your glomerulus are tightly fenestrated. So kapag lumuwag na ang mga fenestrate, uh, fenestra sa ating capillaries, luluwag, uh, lalabas, hindi niya na mag-filter yung ating mga proteins. That's why your your proteins, specifically your albumin, which is a very small, um, a very a very um, small na protein um, with respect to other proteins mas mabilis silang lumabas sa mas mabilis silang lumabas sa ating urine causing now your proteinuria correct okay so speaking of proteinuria did you know that there is a, actually a more um, a, sen- a more sensitive na test for the presence of your of protein in your urine and that is your microalbuminuria microalbumin or your micro uh, the presence of your microalbumin in your urine is called your microalbuminuria so that is also part of your carbohydrates last time correct so aside from that it also is decrease in hypothyroidism delusion dahil polydipsia inom ka ng inom ng water oh cheers tayo diyan inom ka ng inom ng water na dilute na yung 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 blood mo again a function of your oncotic pressure kaya di ba yung protein mo it maintains your oncotic pressure in addition to that um they also decrease ayan in acute disease state okay so like inflammation ganyan so um mutation ayan meron kang analbuminuria okay so analbuminuria albuminemia analbuminemia meaning to say wala ka nang um wala ka ng um, albumin. Okay? We also have your bis albuminemia. Your bis albuminemia, I'll be discussing that further when we discuss the diseases because your bis albuminemia, meron kang extra extra band in your electrophoretic pattern. Ayan, similarly to um, dilution, your hemodilution, ayan, and also sepsis because it shifts your fluid. And ito na tatandaan ninyo, 
sa lahat ng bagay, madaming bagay yung magpapababa sa albumin. But ay magpapababa sa albumin, correct? But there are only two reason why will why will it increase? Number one is dehydration. Sir, but dehydration, ibig sabihin walang tubig sa katawan, sobrang taas ng oncotic pressure mo, sa os, yung oncotic force, your osmotic force, yung oncotic pressure, di ba, natatandaan. So dahil mataas yan, um, dilu- um, hindi siya diluted, but rather walang water inside your body. That's why majority of your, in your plasma are just protein. Aside from that, ano pa yung pwedeng mag-increase sa kanya is your excessive albumin infusion. So, excessive albumin infusion. So, that is also one that increases your albumin. So, I hope everybody, everything is clear. So, kung hindi, wag mag-alala, we'll be having a Q&A portion by the end of my discussion. So, moving forward, let's now go to your globulin. So, again, sabi ko nga, we will be talking about 17 types of globulins. So, what are those 17 types of globulins? So, number one is your alpha-1 your alpha 2, your beta, and your gamma. To, to start with, your globulins are actually not directly measured in the laboratory. The only two things that are measured in the laboratory is your total protein and your albumin. Total protein and your albumin. Sir, paano po yung ano, globulin? Similarly to your LDL, we compute it. So as you can see, total protein minus albumin is equal to your globulin. Okay? Total protein minus albumin is equal to your globulin. So similarly to your LDL, this is derived. Okay? So your globulins uh, have different fractions, okay? Different fractions of different proteins that functions and uh, that functions differently and all of them has their own clinical importance. So um this thing will actually be changing because um there are different um cases or different um conditions that would actually have your um, proteins, your your globulins be increased and decreased. So let's just start along. So, ayan. So as you can see on your screen right now, we have here your antitrypsin, alpha-1 antitrypsin, your haptoglobin in your A2, your transferrin in your um, immunoglobulin. So let's start and do talk about the different types of globulin. So ayan, kung makikita nyo din, this is the electrophoretic pattern. So this one is your albumin, your alpha-1, your alpha-2, alpha-3, and your globulins. Okay? So let's start with the first one, which is your alpha-1 antitrypsin or your AAT. Your alpha-1 antitrypsin is your aglycoprotein and an acute phase reactant, a positive acute phase reactant. So a positive acute phase reactant, it is an anti-protease neutrophil elastase. So this is very important. Um because it neutralizes or inhibits the neutrophil elastase. Your neutrophil elastase kasi is also good naman in the body. It actually fights infection. But in severe cases na sobrang taas ni neutrophil elastase, it can now destroy your alveoli. And if your alveoli is destroyed, okay, uncontrolled action of your neutrophil elastase, alveoli will be destroyed causing now your emphysema. Okay, your emphysema. So there are deficiency in your alpha-1 antitrypsin, namely your Serpina-1 gene, which can be uh, one of the mutations. You can also have a ZZ uh, mutation that has a risk of liver and lung disease. So abnormal form, um, there can um, abnormal form of your your uh, what do you call this? Alpha-1 antitrypsin can accumulate in your liver, seen in your cirrhosis. So your alpha-1 antitrypsin is increased in inflammation because it's a positive acute phase reactant. We have also your pregnancy and your contraceptive use. Anong gustong tandaan, anong gusto, gusto ni Sir Ganding na tandaan ng bawat isa? The name of the the name of the protein saan siyang globulin belong, so alpha-1, um, ano yung action niya at ano yung diseases associated sa kanya. Moving forward to another alpha-1 Globulin, which is your phytoprotein or your AFP. And I guess you, you've heard this already if you've discussed your amniotic fluid in your clinic, in your AUBF. So your um, your alpha-1 phytoprotein is actually synthesized in developing embryo. So it can also be seen in the parenchymal cells of your liver if you're already an adult. So your 
your alpha-1 fetoprotein protects your fetus from immunologic attack by the mother. O, di ba? Parang eksena lang. So, what, what do we mean by immunologic attack? So, there are, um, in some cases, your antibody can actually migrate into your into your um, fetus. It can um, it can pass through the placenta and it can now affect your fetus. So, your alpha-1 fetoprotein protects your, um, it protects your, uh, it, they, they actually protect your, your, um, they actually protect your fetus and at the same time, the mother, okay, the mother as well. So, electro, in the electrophoresis, um, it migrates between your albumin and your alpha-1 globulin. So, um, what is the use of alpha-1 fetoprotein? Screening test siya. Screening test for the gestation age, gestational age of the baby. Okay, so as you can see, I hope you still remember this from your AUBF. It your alpha one fetoprotein is increased in your spina bifida, in your neural tube defect, in your abdominal wall defect, in your anencephaly, in your general fetal distress syndrome, in in the presence of a twin, and also it it is decreased. Okay, mababa pagdating sa um, trisomy 18 and sa Down syndrome. Okay, Down syndrome and your trisomy 18. So, in addition to that, okay, so the levels of your alpha-1 fetoprotein is affected by maternal weight, your race, and even um, diabetes, um, or the, 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 the diabetes MOM, or the multiples of median. So, you have to compute for the um, if you're gonna compute for the um, if you're gonna compute for the MOM, okay, or the gestational age, you can compute it this way. So again, alpha your al your alpha one fetoprotein in adult naman. So yun yung gamit niya pag mga fetus, pag baby, pag pregnancy. But what about the adult? In adult, your alf your 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 alpha-1, okay, your alpha-1 fetoprotein is actually a tumor marker. A tumor marker meaning to say it increases kapag may chronic liver disease. So, um, in cases of chronic liver disease, okay, um, your AFP in the form of your L3 will be increased. What It is a screening test for chronic liver disease and even in your HCC. What is HCC? That is your hepatocellular carcinoma. Your alpha your hepatocellular carcinoma, you can observe an increased level there of your alpha-1 fetoprotein. Okay? So let's just try to end the um, alpha-1, the alpha-1 proteins before we take a quick, quick break. So your alpha-1 fetoprotein, okay, your alpha-1 fetoprotein, aside from that, we also have your alpha-1 acid glycoprotein or your AAG, also known as your acid like your acid glycoprotein also known as your orosco ayan, also known as your oroso mucoid okay your oroso mucoid your oroso mucoid is a negative acute phase reactor is a negatively charged rather a negatively charged and is a positive acute phase reactant ayan it is a positive acute phase reactant so, so it has a similar amino acid sequence as of your immunoglobulin. Pakikitandaan yung part na yan. So, it is important in drug action, distribution, and disposition. So, that's very important in your drug metabolism. Okay? So, it is, your orosomucoid is increased in cases of stress, inflammation, tissue damage, acute myocardial infarction, trauma, pregnancy, cancer, pneumonia, rheumatic arthritis, and even surgery. So your alpha-1 acid glycoprotein or your oros orosomucoid can increase in cases of those situations. And it can also be used for the diagnosis of neonatal bacterial infection. Okay? Neonatal bacterial infection. Okay? Neonatal bacterial infection. So moving forward to the last few... Um, to the last few um, alpha-1, we have here your alpha-1 antichymotrypsin, okay? Your alpha-1 uh, alpha antichymotrypsin is an alpha-globulin glycoprotein, which is acute phase reactant, a positive acute phase reactant, 
which is a serine protease inhibitor or a serpin inhibitor. So they inhibit and en um, inhibit enzyme activity. So they cleave your catapsin G, your pancreatic elastase, your mast cell kinase, and your chymotrypsin. So in short, they are actually um, maintaining the um, they are maintaining the activity of your enzyme. So they inhibit it para in case konwari na magkaroon ng ng um, abrupt na increase lang yung mga yung mga mga protein yung mga enzymes na natin na yan, mapiprevent natin. Okay? So your alpha-1 antichymotrypsin is increased in your inflammation, uh, decrease in your liver disease, and at the same time, your um, your um, alpha-1 antichymotrypsin is also um, related daw, okay, is also related in, is also seen, okay, in your your Parkinson's disease and your COPD. Okay, in your COPD, in your Parkinson, in your COPD, and um, in your Alzheimer's disease, a compo it is uh, also a component of your amyloid deposits. So, para sa mga nag-iisip na ng thesis sa next year, okay, so you can actually measure the level of alpha-1 antichymotrypsin in patients with Alzheimer's. Okay, so patients with Alzheimer's have a component of um, alpha-1 anti anti-chymotrypsin in their amyloid deposit. So we go to our um, next one. Okay, we go to our next one. So hindi ko makita. We go to our next one, your inter-alpha trypsin inhibitor. So it is a um, serine protease inhibitor as well. So it has a light chain, your bicotin. Okay, your bicotin. So it is a positive acute phase reactant that increases in your inflammatory disorder and also in the presence of your carcinogens, okay? Your carcinogens. So I'll just be discussing one last before we go have a quick, quick break. So we also have here your GC globulin or your group-specific component, which is a binding protein for your vitamin D, okay? Your, vit your, um, your GC globin or your group-specific component globulin rather, is a vitamin D carrier. So, vitamin D carrier. Bakit kailangan ng vitamin D ng carrier? Because fat-soluble siya alongside with vitamin A, D, E, and K. Okay? Asan na si A? Sinong nagbuhat kay K? Si prealbumin. Si transthyretin. Siya si retin, retinol, vitamin A. So, your GC globulin um, is important in bone formation, immune, immune system, Chemotaxis, um, chemotaxis of neutrophil and monocyte during inflammation. So your GC globulin are increased in the third trimester of pregnancy, increased also with oral estrogen as a contraceptives, and decrease in severe liver disease and protein losing, um, protein losing syndrome. So those are the f um, first half of our major protein. So hopefully you... Um, you learned a lot so before we um before we continue on our discussion i will we will be taking a quick 10 minute break so let has let us all have a quick 10 uh let us all have not not 10 pala masyadong mahaba 5 minute break okay everybody just take a 5 minute break before you continue watching our video so that would be all for the first for the second part of protein and i'll see you guys in a short short Wow. Thank you so much.